千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware. As we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao, Lao Tzu is basically saying that this is a process of harmonizing yourself, the people, and the Tao. So let me explain what all that means. Harmonizing yourself means you must cultivate peace within. That's the virtue of non-contention. So, in that quest, you have three guides in this chapter. There is the talk of the great general, the great warriors, those who are the best at defeating enemies. They don't get violent. They don't get warlike, angry. They don't engage in battles. This is all about cultivating peace within, non-contention. When you're able to harmonize yourself. By having that internal peace, you move on to the next level. The internal becomes external. The external transformation is to harmonize with people. So the humility that you bring in, the Tao or virtue of humility, this is the power of managing people. Those who are good at managing people lower themselves. They're humble. When you're able to harness that. You move to the, you move, you spread that internal peace and humility outward to affect everyone around you, and this happens in the home, in the workplace, in a group setting, in a social situation. Lastly, when you've mastered these transformations, internal and external, it is time for universal or life transformation, and that is to. Harmonize with the Tao itself. So this is called being harmonious with heaven, and this is what Lao Tzu calls the ultimate principle of the ancients. This is it. In order to illustrate this concept, once again, I would like to showcase ancient poetry for everyone's attention. This one, this poem that I'll show you, is doing exactly what we see here in this slide, tying together humility, heaven, the Tao. And you'll see a picture here of a rice paddy, farmers bending over to do their work. So there is a poem associated with that. It comes to us from more than a thousand years ago. 手把青秧插满田，低头便见水中天。六根清净方为道，退步原来是向前。So as I recited that poem, you can hear the sing-song quality of ancient Chinese poetry. Chinese is tonal, where characters have different pitches, and that lends a musical quality to it. The characters are one at a time, which means that ancient poetry would be much more rigorous than what we see in poetry of other languages. Every language in the world has its own unique kind of beauty. This is the kind of beauty that you see in the ancient Chinese. It's a little further away from everyday speech, a little bit closer to music or song. 
Let me explain what that poem means. First line says, hands plant green seedlings throughout the field. Second line, lower head and see the sky in the water. Third line, only clear tranquility in the six roots is the Tao. Last line, retreating one step is actually advancing forward. What is this talking about? Well, the picture illustrates the concept and it is a, it is a genius level correspondence with different concepts that are all tied together in a beautiful package. Hands plant green seedlings throughout the field. That's the work of the farmers in the rice paddy. Their hands are planting the seed, the seedlings in that field. This is metaphoric to talk about how when you cultivate the Tao, you are planting the seeds of wisdom in the rich soil of your mind where you hope the wisdom will take root and grow tall and strong. Then next line, lower head and see the sky in the water. As these farmers do their work, their heads are lowered, they're bending over and they see the sky reflected in the water. This is a beautiful metaphor. Lowering your head is to be humble. When you are humble, you are able to see the wide open skies reflected in the water. You can see the connection here between these four lines and the previous two lines that we were talking about. That when you're able to back away from conflict, when you're able to exhibit the virtue of humility, everything opens up, the wide open spaces. So this is the connection with heaven that your practice in the Tao of humility leads to the wide open spaces, the heavenly openness of the Tao. Then only tra clear tranquility in the six roots is the Tao. The six roots are the six roots of desires. Only when you clear them can you follow the Tao, can you walk the path of the Tao. And then retreating one step is actually advancing forward. The farmers, as they do their work, planting and then taking a step back and plant again, taking a step back is actually advancing their cause of planting crops so that they can enjoy bountiful harvest when autumn comes around. This is yet another beautiful metaphor to retreat one step is metaphoric language to talk about backing away from conflict. And you saw that as well in the previous two lines that we talked about. So it's actually advancing forward, not just the farmers expecting bountiful harvest, but in life, when we're able to back away from conflict, we're actually advancing our cause, the cause to live a great life, to create a good life for ourselves, and our loved ones. So this poem comes from more than a thousand years ago. Let me provide you with some additional details. There are multiple versions of this poem. So in the third line in particular, there are versions that don't mention the six roots. And there are versions that use different characters for the fourth character in line three. How do I know which one is the correct version? Well, one important clue is that this poem originated in the Tang Dynasty, and that's 1100, 1200 years ago. In the third line, you see reference to the six roots. That's actually, as I mentioned, the six roots of desires and this is a Buddhist term. And clear tranquility 
Qing Jing. What is that? Well, it so happens that at that time, during the Tang Dynasty, there was a nameless master who wrote the Qing Jing Jing, which is the classic of clear tranquility or the classic of clarity and tranquility. Qing Jing is the concept that ties together Buddhist teachings and the Tao. So the six roots of this whole idea, the desires, this is what distracts from us. It's the sensory inputs, the stimuli that we get from the eyes, the nose, the tongue, the ears, the body, and also the mind. Because thinking can be desires as well. It is only when you find a way to clear that up, to attain tranquility, that you can walk the path. In that one line, in the third line, we have unified Buddhist teachings and the Tao in only seven characters. So who was the great mind that created this poem? Well, it's a historical person who lived during the Tang Dynasty. He died about 1100 years ago. He was known as the cloth bag monk. He was portly. He always had a big smile. He laughed heartily. He was happy. He was believed by many to be the reincarnation of the Maitreya Buddha. Eventually, his likeness will become known as the Maitreya Buddha in statues all over places where Chinese culture exists. So the monk who wrote these lines is actually what you see when you were to go to, for instance, a Chinese restaurant, uh, a Chinese establishment of business, and you see what people will point to as the Buddha. Well, actually not the original Shakyamuni Buddha, the, what people say the laughing Buddha or the fat Buddha is actually the Maitreya Buddha, the cloth bag monk. Because he lived in the Tang Dynasty, that was a period of time when Buddhist teachings and concepts were prevalent and well known. And that's why I can tell, I can easily guess that the version that uses those terms, the six desires, the six roots, the six senses, those will be the ones likely to be the original accurate version. There is a complete discussion of the six desires in chapter four of the Tao of Tranquility, the cover of which you see now. The bottom line with this poem is that when you unify your own cultivation of the Tao, when you plant the seeds of wisdom, with the reflection of the Tao in heaven in you, free of contention, free of all the things that distract from the path, with humility in your heart, harmonizing with nature, that is the true essence of the ultimate principle. That is why we say, it is called being harmonious with heaven, the ultimate principle of the ancients. Now everything makes sense. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.